Hello, fifth graders. Welcome to Go Math Lesson 10.2, Customary Capacity. Pause while you write Lesson 10.2, Customary Capacity, in your math notebook. Pause while you write today's lesson objective in your math notebook. Today's objective is compare, contrast, and convert customary units of capacity. Pause again while you write the vocabulary word for this lesson. The vocabulary word is capacity. Its definition is the maximum amount that a container can hold. Now we will unlock the problem. Mara has a can of paint with three cups of purple paint in it. She also has a bucket with a capacity of 26 fluid ounces. Will the bucket hold all of the paint Mara has? The capacity of a container is the amount the container can hold. So let's look over at our purple box. It says, what capacity does Mara need to convert? Well, Mara has three cups of purple paint, and we want to know if that paint can fit into a bucket that can hold 26 fluid ounces. So we need to convert... three cups two fluid ounces. The next bullet point says after Mara converts the units what does she need to do next? So after Mara figures out how many fluid ounces are in three cups, she will need to compare the amount of paint with the fluid ounces the bucket will hold. Which was, we know that it'll hold 26 fluid ounces. So let's go ahead and solve the problem. As we will see on the next slide, one cup equals eight fluid ounces. So similar to yesterday, we're going to use a bar model to write an equation. Step one, convert three cups to fluid ounces. So this represents one cup, two cups, and three cups, all in which have eight fluid ounces in them. So if we have, if we do eight times three, we get 24. So let's move over to the record. It says our total cups was three cups that we had up here times the fluid ounces in one cup, which we see here, eight fluid ounces, and then our total fluid ounces that we figured out was 24 fluid ounces. So let's compare in step two. 24 fluid ounces is less than 26 fluid ounces. So moving down, it says since 24 fluid ounces is less than 26 fluid ounces, Mara's bucket will hold all of the paint. Moving on to our example. The first thing that you should do is copy down this box so that you can have it for a reference. 
because it is something that you will want to have. Our example says, Coral made 32 pints of fruit punch for a party. She needs to transport the fruit punch in one gallon containers. How many containers does Coral need? Let's look at this little purple box here. It says to convert a smaller unit to a larger unit, you need to divide. Sometimes you may need to convert more than once, which is what we'll, we will be doing in this example. So first we'll be converting from pints, which is what we have right now. Oops. So from pints to quarts. And then from quarts to gallons, which is what we will be needing to put that fruit punch in when we transport it to the party. So let's move on to step one. We're converting. So our total pints is 32. Now we need to look at our chart and find out how many pints are in one quart, which is what we're looking at right here. So let's go to our chart and we find our, our quart and it says that there's two pints in one quart. So if we're going from pints to quarts, smaller to larger, we're going to divide. So this should be a division sign in here and we're going to divide by two because there's two pints in one quart. So if we divide 32 divided by two, we get 16 quarts. So we move on to step two. Write an equation to convert quarts to gallons. So we're going to take that 16 that we just found and put it right here for our total quarts and we're going from quarts to gallons, again, smaller to larger, so we're still dividing. And then we need to find out how many quarts are in one gallon. So let's look over at our chart and we find the gallons, we find our one gallon and we look and it says four quarts for one gallon. So we're going to divide by 4. So 16 divided by 4 equals 4. So coral needs 4 1 gallon containers to transport the punch. Be sure to go back to your teacher's webpage and complete the exit slip. Be sure you are able to write the lesson objective in the form of an I can statement and be sure you understand the lesson. Thank you. We'll see you in class tomorrow.